up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new completely redesigned 2022 hyundai tucson courtesy of jack g and volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so obviously wanted to check this one out this thing is completely different than the previous generation tucson not only is it completely redesigned it's substantially larger than the previous tucson as well and i'll get into all the numbers later in the video of course for you guys but not only that you do still have america's best warranty with this one as well being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 year one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain that's wonderful and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this new tucson acceleration braking ride quality steering field cargo space rear legroom sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 tucson first one being the se starting at twenty four thousand nine hundred fifty dollars sel which is actually the one we have today starting at twenty six thousand five hundred dollars end line for thirty thousand six hundred and lastly the limited starting at thirty four thousand seven hundred dollars i do also want to say there are a couple different package options for example we do have a premium package and convenience package here with our sel trim level that we have today so that's going to tack on a little bit extra then as well but regardless of which trim level that you go with the power plant on this tucson is going to be the same powering this beast is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder engine putting out 187 horsepower 6100 rpm 178 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic giving you mpg numbers at least on our all-wheel drive that we have today at 24 in the city 29 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the tucson i did want to mention there are of course some drive modes that come standard on this one that drive mode switch is located directly behind the shifter and that will include normal sport smart and snow actually as well and so all in all those drive modes will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well and so now having said all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode did want to also mention paddle shifters are available on this one we don't have them today so we won't be testing those out but you can get them on the tucson if you wanted them but nonetheless let's go ahead and find that straight away let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 hyundai tucson here up to speed all right you guys these are straight away kind of let's kick it All right, hey, for being honest, this is not the quickest thing in the world. I think we all pretty much knew that from the get-go. It's it's an SUV, it's naturally aspirated, it's not turbocharged, but you know what, it will get the job done. It's gonna be plenty to merge onto the highway or anything like that, but still, wouldn't have minded a bit quicker of an acceleration in this one. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, up front you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.8 inch solid rear discs as far as the braking feel goes as we are pulling up to this red light right here is perfectly fine absolutely no issues with that braking feel sometimes in the past hyundai has had somewhat of a soft braking feel that is not the case in this one i would say with the tucson it is just right so no issues there whatsoever and if i haven't mentioned it before there is an auto start stop system which did completely shut off the engine there at that red light so it's going to help you save some mpg numbers there as well but then touching on suspension and handling of course you are going to find a four-wheel independent suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as well as far as ride quality goes that has been really better than i expected it to be i feel like this is a much smoother ride quality than in previous generations that i've tested with the tucson so i'm definitely feeling that as far as cabin noise goes, you do get a decent amount of, uh, of, if anything, engine noise. You definitely get a decent amount of engine noise, which for me personally isn't a bad thing. I like hearing the engine personally, but it is a decent amount of exterior noise coming into the cabin. That's something Hyundai has uh, kind of been known for. It's something that I have on my Hyundai Santa Fe as well, and my Hyundai Sonata for that matter. So there is a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin. But anyways, as far as steering feel goes, like I said earlier to you guys, it is adjustable. I do still have it in that sport driving 
driving mode right now, so it is giving me a heavier feel because of that reason, which I personally like. I like the heavier feel to the steering. If you didn't want that heavier steering feel, you can always just put it in comfort driving mode and then you have a looser steering feel. So kind of gives you the best of both worlds there. And I do have a nice sporty gauge cluster as well. We do have the digital gauge setup. I'll get more into that in a little bit here, but it does completely change the look of the gauges, which I absolutely love. But anyways, then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Visibility is wonderful here in our Tucson's. Absolutely no issues there. And rain sensing windshield wipers also coming on the Tucson as well. So what that is, is whenever the Tucson detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers, kind of like automatic headlights. So essentially it's just one last thing you got to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive. So with that being said, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this completely redesigned 2022 Hyundai Tucson. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Tucson finished in quartz white. In case anybody was curious of the exterior color name, I just love this front grille. But before I get ahead of myself again, it's completely redesigned for the 2022 model year. It is 5.9 inches longer. It is 0.6 inches wider and 0.6 inches taller than as well, which essentially puts it now at right around the same size as competitors like the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4 as well, which it wasn't even close to for the previous generation. So I do want to mention that. Anyways, let's now go ahead and start up front. That redesigned front grille incorporates the headlights into the design. I absolutely love this look. This is something Hyundai has been killing it lately with. They're doing things that no other brand, no other manufacturer out there is doing right now, like incorporating the lights and the front grille together. I love this look. It is so unique. Nothing else like it on the road right now. And so for that reason, I am an absolute huge fan. And by the way, the lighting incorporated into the front grille, that is all of the LED daytime running lights. The actual real headlights are just below to the sides there. That is actually going to be the actual headlights on this thing. And by the way, LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level. That of course comes with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Again, LED daytime running lights coming standard as well for all trim levels. Do have some front air curtains just to the sides of those front headlights there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there and dependent upon the trim level that you go with you sometimes will get some silver front accenting on that front lip then as well although we don't have it on our SEL trim level here today but overall again this front end is like absolutely nothing else on the road right now and I love the blacked out Hyundai emblem within that front grille it makes it look so much cooler in the front end but overall you cannot hate this front grille this thing looks absolutely amazing but anyways now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Tucson here. All right, and so now since we are around the side of this one, roof rails do come standard on every single trim level, in case you were curious. Rear privacy glass also coming standard across the board. You can find that silver trim accenting towards the top of the windows, which then kind of tie into the floating roof line towards the back of this one. Definitely a very unique look to the new Tucson here. Very angular side profile as well. You guys could probably see that there are so many indentations across the side profile of the Tucson. It definitely gives it a much more sporty look. Kind of reminds me of what Hyundai did with the new Elantra redesign as well. It has many similar characteristics to that kind of design, which I think is personally pretty cool. It's definitely a very unique look to it, like nothing else on the road. Then take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored, power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with integrated turn signals then as well. You guys can see that. And take a look down at the wheel setup. They are 17 inch alloys for the SE and SEL. However, again, we do have the SEL, but we don't have those 17 inch alloys because we have both the premium and convenience packages. And so for that reason, we actually have those wheels bumped up. The 19 inch alloys actually do come with the N line and the limited trim levels. So did want to mention that as well, but overall very unique side profile to the Tucson and I absolutely love it. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. All right, and so first thing I wanted to mention since we are around back all the way to the very top, gloss black shark fin antenna does come standard just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. And of course you will have a rear window wiper back here as well. But let me tell you guys, just like the recent Lexus I just reviewed, the rear window wiper is not actually on the rear glass itself, but rather 
tucked away underneath that rear spoiler so it is going to drop down when you actually turn it on so that is going to help out with visibility a little bit there but also wanted to mention you guys see the hyundai logo it's kind of incorporated into the rear glass a little bit. So it is not a 3D effect kind of thing. It's not actually going to be stamped onto the back of that rear lift gate. It's kind of incorporated into the glass. So a little bit different of a look there as well. I kind of like it again. Hyundai is known for thinking outside the box and doing things that no other manufacturers are currently doing, including these taillights. Let me talk about these taillights. LED taillights with a very unique look to them with the LED light bar going all the way across the back there. Again, like nothing else you see on the road right now, it kind of reminds me with the disconnected taillights there, like half of them on the lift gate, half of them not. So kind of reminds me of the old Toyota Altezza or Lexus IS300 from back in the day if you're here in the US. So kind of a cool look to it. It's kind of unique. And again, it's not like anything else that you currently see on the road. So then again, for the limited trim level, you're gonna get some silver accenting towards the bottom of the Tucson. And let me show you guys another thing real quick. You got these diamond pattern indentations here on the bottom portion of the rear bumper. And yes, they are kind of a 3D effect. It is a diamond pattern. So again, that is something a little bit different that you don't typically see. I like that Hyundai did that as well. Again, another thing you don't usually see on the road. So that is pretty cool. But so then as always, just below it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath, not incorporated into the rear bumper, which I wish they would have done, but still nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. so now since we are around back here of the Tucson when it comes to opening that rear lift gate it is a power lift gate there is a button on the lift gate itself there is actually also a button on the key fob itself and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well so a few different ways to go ahead and open up that rear lift gate but once opened up this is really going to impress you guys 38.7 cubic feet behind that second row with the second row folded down that is going to come in at 74.8 cubic feet and here's what's going to impress you the 2021 tucson or the previous generation actually comes in at 61.9 cubic feet so it went from 61.9 to 74.8 cubic feet in this new 2022 tucson that is a huge difference from the previous generation so much more space which is why i was saying at the beginning of the video it's much closer in size now to the honda crv and to the toyota rav4 because previously it couldn't even compete when it comes to size so that is that is pretty cool i like that but anyways there are actually little levers found in that cargo area to go ahead and fold down those rear seats so that is how you're going to actually fold those down there are grocery bag hooks in the cargo area tie down anchors of course there is some cargo lighting you can find a 12 volt power outlet back there as well there is a cargo cover available and very little bit of in floor storage underneath of that cargo floor however most of that is taken up by the spare tire that is what you're actually going to find back there in case anybody was curious so that is pretty cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear leg room. First thing I wanted to mention, when the seats are folded down, there is actually a nifty little area to place your seat belt if you wanted to push that out of the way. So that is absolutely wonderful. I love how Hyundai did this and other manufacturers, including Hyundai actually, have done it in different ways in the past, but I kind of like this way. It really kind of sticks into that little section to put your seat belt. So I wanted to mention that. that's one of the little quirks about this new Tucson here, but rear legroom comes in at 41.3 inches. For reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. And again, for reference, the old Tucson, the 2021 Tucson comes in at 38.2 inches. So 41 point three is a substantial improvement over the previous generation yet again also rear passengers can find their rear center armrest with cup holders there are vertical rear ventilation vents back there usually you find them horizontally i'm very rarely do i see them vertical so it's another little unique characteristic to the new tucson so i absolutely love that because it's different couple rear usb charging ports back there as well so that is pretty cool you can actually get heated rear seats if you were to go with the limited trim level only so i love that that is available as well and overall 
plenty of space for me and I absolutely love the LED roof lighting here in the back as well. So that is pretty cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats of the Tucson. Cloth seating coming standard with the SE and SEL. And of course we have the leather seating today because we have some of those package options I was telling you guys about. Leather cloth combination coming with the N-Line standard and the Limited is going to give you full leather seating although we do have it today. Heated front seats actually come standard on this SEL trim level no matter what power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar also coming standard on the SEL and then the limited trim level is going to add a power adjustable passenger seat and ventilated front seats then as well by the way those heated and ventilated seat buttons are located just in front of that center armrest so they're a little different position than you may be used to seeing them on other vehicles so I did want to point that out to you guys but Nonetheless, taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it will be heated if you were to go with the limited trim level only. So no issues with the steering wheel on this one. Then making our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it around, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and we actually have a remote start then as well. But I will say, if you guys wanted Smart Pack, it's simply just got to go with the limited trim level on this one. So that is how you're going to go ahead and get that. And I love that feature. I've played around with that with Hyundai and Genesis in the past. It's absolutely wonderful. But anyways, Let's now go ahead and take a look at the gauges. To actually start this one, I'm simply just gonna put my foot on the brake and press the engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there. But once started up, there are two different gauge clusters. There's your traditional analog gauges, which are going to come standard on the SE and SEL, but then there's the 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster, which we have here as an option on our SEL, but comes standard on the end line and limited. And that is currently what you guys are looking at. And again, when you change the drive modes, this is the coolest part of these gauges. It completely changes the look of those digital gauges. For example, when you put it in that sport driving mode, it gives you kind of a carbon fiber look with some red hues. You put it in smart, you're gonna have more of white hues and blue, and then the normal kind of looks like the same thing as does the snow. But would it be cool if they switched that up for some of the other driving modes, not just the sport, but I do love how the sport looks, I will say that. But anyways, to adjust what is on those digital gauges, there are actually steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like your trip a trip b of course there's your average miles per gallon at any given time when you need your next oil change there's some tire pressure information there's your driver attention level some other safety features as well and of course how many miles you have left until you hit empty which currently says 365 miles and we are pretty close to full there so that is a decent range actually for an suv i will say that but overall gauges look absolutely amazing i love them i always love digital gauge clusters because it allows you to really personalize it to make it your own but nonetheless let's now go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality of the new tucson now let me start with panoramic sunroof coming standard with the limited however you can find a regular sunroof that is going to be available as a package option for some of the other trim levels like we have today that's what you guys are looking at the end line is actually going to give you alloy foot pedals and alloy scuff plates as well automatic climate control does come standard on this one dual zone climate control is going to be available and that is what you guys are looking at right now wireless phone charger is going to be available that is located directly in front of the shifter so that is pretty cool for your smartphone i actually use that in my own hyundai and i absolutely love it there are a couple usb charging ports just in front of the shifter as well a 12 volt power outlet a little bit of rubberized storage just to the right of the shifter you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage in there too you actually also have home link controls that are available on this one they are located just underneath of that rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors so big fan of that as well tons of gloss black accents throughout this one i really love whatever this cloth feeling is found on the doors that continue on above the passenger side glove box and really completely encompassing the entire interior here so i love that design as well along with the air vents the air vents are kind of the same thing they're kind of incorporated into the doors but it turns into a gloss black accent piece i guess you could say but overall it's a very cool look a very well thought out when it comes to the design and i like how the tech is kind of tilted towards the driver as well just like a lot of sports cars do like the nissan gtr and a bunch of other vehicles as well so i like how everything's kind of tilted more driver centric i guess you could say so overall 
Interior design is very well thought out. I think I would have liked a different color interior, but overall, a lot of gloss black accents, not a whole lot of matte gray plastics really at all, which I absolutely love. So overall, interior quality is just fine for me. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display. It is going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the SE SEL and N line trim levels, and then a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the limited trim level, of course. But either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and what's even better, wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. That is my favorite part. So essentially, if I were to get this, I don't need any wires in this thing. My smartphone is going to charge up wirelessly just in front of the shifter. And then if I were to turn it on Android Auto, I don't need any wires yet again. Typically you have to plug it into a USB charging port on other vehicles, but not with the Tucson. That is pretty cool. Anyways, factory navigation system is going to come with the limited, although you really don't need it as long as you have a smartphone because of Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Can of course check out your climate control settings on the infotainment screen as well. There's also something called quiet mode. And so the reason behind quiet Quiet mode is if you have kids in the back, it's actually going to turn off those rear speakers so you don't wake them up and it's going to limit the front speakers to seven. So that is kind of a cool setup. If you want the kids to stay asleep when you're driving to Ocean City, Maryland or something like that, I don't know, I'm just saying. You can actually also get something called Sounds of Nature, which I can't show you guys, but that is going to be available on the 10 and a quarter inch screen or the limited trim level, I should say. And that is pretty cool. It takes you through different sounds of nature, kind of ambient sounds, if you will. So I can't show it to you guys again, but I've shared it on other Hyundai and Genesis reviews that I've done if you wanted to check that out. Can of course, also check out your radio information up there as expected. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems on the 2022 Tucson, you will find six speakers with the SE and SEL, but then there is also an eight speaker Bose sound system that is going to be available coming standard on the limited but we actually do have that as an option here on our SEO. Go figure, right? But anyways, let's now go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our Bose sound system that we do indeed have here today. <laughs> Bass was wonderful in that Bose sound system. I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before. They're incredibly reliable. They have never failed me. That was really a very good sound system for the Tucson, I will say that. Another thing I wanted to mention is another thing Hyundai does a little bit differently in the Tucson is rather than having the turn knobs for the tune button and also the volume button, there are actually little scrolly things located to the right and the left of the infotainment screen. So that's a little bit different than I'm used to seeing and that Hyundai has done in the past as well. So I did want to mention that it's not a bad thing, just something a little bit different to get used to. So I wanted to mention it. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Tucson in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. It does take up the entire screen and it is very high definition as well. So well done Hyundai for that. And you will actually find a surround view monitor if if you were to go with the limited trim level, that is going to be how you're going to go ahead and get that, but very nice quality on the rear view camera there. But now, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start with IIHS top safety pick for the 2021 model year. And that was only if you got the available LED headlights, but now the LED headlights come standard on the 2022, I would imagine it would at least be that IIHS top safety pick, if not the top safety pick plus for this particular model year, although it has not been tested yet. So I did want to mention that as a disclaimer, but nonetheless, front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back. You're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but Hyundai Smart Sense also comes standard on all trim levels. And that is Hyundai's new safety suite of features, I guess you could say, that includes forward collision warning with pedestrian detection, automatic emergency braking, that's always a good one, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, driver attention monitoring system and rear occupant alert as well and then if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, you will also find a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and adaptive cruise control with stop and go as well, which is a brilliant system with Hyundai. It almost drives itself. It's crazy. And then the limited trim level is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, I don't know. I absolutely love the redesign of this thing. The front grille incorporating the headlights into the design is a brilliant thing. I love the side profile. The taillights are incredibly 
incredibly unique on the Tucson as well. So overall, the design was done very well. Whoever designed this from Hyundai, you deserve a raise. The design on this thing is absolutely amazing. I love that the Tucson is now bigger as well than the previous generation that puts it on par with the Honda CRV and the Toyota RAV4. And of course, it gives you more space as well, which is always a good thing. I love the tech on the new Tucson, specifically the digital gauge cluster. That is something I have definitely grown accustomed to. Reviewing cars on a regular basis here. I love digital gauges because you can completely customize them, make them your own, really tailor them to your own liking. That is a big thing for me at this point, and I love the incredible warranty that Hyundai gives you too. And I don't think I even mentioned it. By the way, guys, you get three years of free maintenance with all Hyundais now as well. So for the first three years, you ain't gotta pay for oil changes. You don't have to pay for the tire rotations. All the basic maintenance is completely free so save your money there that is pretty cool and again the warranty is the very best warranty you can get here in the u.s if you're watching in the u.s but overall when it comes to constructive criticism i don't really i don't know what to say there isn't a whole lot of constructive criticism i can think of besides maybe uh multicolor ambient lighting would be cool to see maybe some rear window sunshades as well but then you're kind of getting into the hyundai santa fe territory which will be the next step up on this thing so i don't know I kind of like it for what it is. It's pretty much perfect. I don't know that I would change anything, but let me know what you guys think of the new Tucson in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, make sure you hit the like button, of course, as well, because that, of course, helps increase the reach of this video, and I do appreciate that. But overall, that is about it for this one, you guys. I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.